What's up, Lunker League? And any new people tuning in for the first time, welcome. This is Largemouth Lunkin. My name's Kermit. I'm going to take you on a journey today of what I typically do. Um, sometimes I'm on the boat, sometimes I'm on the bank, and that's going to be sometimes in the same day, often in the same day, as I go on a hunt out here trying to find some sort of summer pattern or regularity with the fish. So let's go ahead and check this out and we'll do a wrap up after. <laughs> See if we can do it. Somebody want to hang out with me today? All right. All right, good. Look right at the top of the, there's the roof of the mouth. Good. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and get them back. Off the bottom? Yes. That's how it is, huh? Nada. What's up? I said, Nada, senor. So wouldn't you know it, I turn off my camera and I get another one. All right, let's do it.
let's try something different. There we go. There we go. Oh, Wiley, do. Get them back. What's up, Lunker League? So, quite a grind today, but still a lot of fun. Um, learning a lot of how these fish transition during summertime, how they generally pull off the bank, at least in these areas where I'm at, um, at the uh, Los Banos Creek wildlife uh, reservoir they pull quite off the bank quite a bit there there's a group of them that are just out there dedicated to chasing the balls of bait fish and then you have some bottom fish that are uh, down below too as well um, some suspended fish but lately I haven't been getting a good shot at them they've been saying you know can't get these schooling fish uh, for the short years I've been out here, I've always been able to get those schooling fish on a fluke. Uh, fluke is normally what can do it for you out there. Uh, in those cases, I know people have used jerk baits, they've used uh, spook type baits, they've used uh, poppers. Uh, at one point, I used a uh, lipless crankbait in, in order to catch schooling fish. There's been a wide variety of things. So I haven't been getting a good look at them. They're kind of too far offshore. And once we're in the boat, they're popping up here or there. Uh, I've been having this issue with this, this spinning rod and, and, and fluoro. So that hasn't been working out for me quite how I would want when I can get a calf somewhere close to them. So got a lot of work to do. Um, with that but what was successful on on this trip was uh the drop shot once again uh, but at this point in time uh, i have a different worm it's a more translucent worm it has a uh, purple green flake and for some reason that one that one starts to starts to edge ahead on on getting some bites and some looks that that possibly uh the other worms that i go to don't um sometimes and, and many times in this lake i also like the watermelon uh red red and black flake but generally when it comes to the drop shot i i like unique worms um uh, that that tend to stand out for those techniques i don't necessarily look for those colors uh in my senkos my senkos i'm a little bit more traditional although again i do like the watermelon uh black and red flake and then to go into darker the green pumpkin um from there and a, one of my favorites all-time favorites is the uh green pumpkin amber mix from gary yamamoto that that's when i feel like i'm really on game i present i present a contrast which they've proven to, to get more strikes, to have contrasting colors. Um, in addition to that, I present two very natural colors as well as the flake, and you can't go wrong with a Gary Yamamoto worm. So that's why I like that. Um, but backing off of that, 
generally more unique worms when I am drop shotting. I will go with the straight green pumpkin if I think that'll work, but I've stood next to somebody with the green pumpkin and me using a morning dawn chartreuse tip or me using a margarita mutilator or I have a couple other variations I can't really remember like a just sunrise and and a few other ones from from robo worm and then the zoom that's where I get like the spray glass and I get I get these other translucent and colors that stand out a bit you don't have to have a lot of them but you, you want them to be different it's not just your typical red worm or it's not just your typical green style worm zoom worms and robo worms I feel have the best uh, movement in them for a drop shot for a shaky head um, other techniques um, I'm unsure you know you can go round and round there's a lot of great plastics out there and give them all a look that's what I would say so that you can present something different or unique that you can find successful for you maybe the way you twitch it is a little bit lighter than the way this person twitches it therefore you having a more active worm at this day on said conditions could work out for you a lot better so that that's what you want to figure out that's total tangent off of off of this day other than i switched to a worm during this time that has more of a translucent body um, generally the sun's up high and it's clear and that's kind of what we were we were facing um, not super clear as it's been there's been a little bit of a uh, little bit of debris and stuff in the water and tent in the water so on um, this day tough to find found them on on the drop shot uh, missed out on my opportunities when they were busting um, that that I believe is set up so got to run some more braid and and get set up on that so I can really have something that I can hit those fish with with the fluke on especially open water fluke open water fluke I'm gonna go with the lighter line I'm gonna go with the open hook so that's why more of the uh, spinning rod now when it comes to uh, timber and other things like that where I'm gonna need to have say an EWG hook so therefore now I need a I'm gonna need a stiffer rod even though I generally run heavier rods on my uh, on my spinning gear I'm thinking either I'm gonna need to go with a fluoro uh, all fluoro setup which I just haven't been digging lately unless I'm using a really light line unless I'm using say eight and lower I really don't dig so I'm gonna set up another uh, spinning setup with the braid how I like it with with the leader what that does though is when you're you're twitching it you don't get that stretch so it works to bait harder per se so I've been trying to figure out maybe I'll go to I could actually go to a medium um, instead of my medium heavy just for that top water bait just for that type of occasion and, and see how that works generally when it comes to the drop shot believe it or not that medium heavy tends to keep them pinned a lot easier. I feel way more in control instead of panic like, oh, oh, he's going here, he's going there, he's going here. Um, that happens more when you start getting five plus. Then you know you're really, you're, you're dug into, you're dug in. Before that, or a hard three puller you never know if they really want to pull then it becomes a problem but it doesn't become a problem playing every fish out especially when there's uh, timber and grass and other places where your line can get hung up and instead of pulling them through you're maintaining and when you're maintaining they're gonna pull on a limb or rock and all of a sudden create that space where they can get unhooked 
if you can continue to pull stiffer stiffer rod and and crank down on them as well as pull and keep them pinned you can get them through that cover and so that's the reason why I generally choose heavier sticks but I'm gonna go with the open water uh, stick on that to see if I can really target these uh, these bass especially in these situations as well as I think I might do a, a little lightweight uh, bait casting setup. I don't have many unless I'm cranking and then from there that's more of a parabolic bend rod and generally I like to go with uh, a little stiffer rod, a faster tip when it comes to the fluke uh, just so I can I can set them with that extra wide gap hook. So basically I would rambled on too much, had a great time out there, uh, got two off the boat got uh, one out of the creek that I had on camera. I've been missing a lot of them lately. If you like what you've seen today, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Share my video. Uh, Lunker League, I love you for all that's new. Hope you had a great time. Stay tuned for the next one.